for me, that's fascinating to think that really what he's trying to teach us is if we do his will, we become his brothers, sisters, his mother, part of his family, and that as we become part of his family, we will listen and learn from him as well. Yeah, we were actually, we were speaking about this in the car on the way over, um, because I think there is an interesting tension in the church because Jesus, we have such a family-centered church with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, and I love that about our church. It's something I do that too. really resonates with me about the church, and um, I love my family. I'm excited about starting my a new family one day. Um, but I do think you look at you look at Christ's life, and he often had sort of surprising things to say about families, um, things that that don't fit into this very neat story we tell in the church about the family being the center of um, sort of our own. Uh, spiritual journey, which on one hand, I really agree with, but I think Jesus, as always, he stretches us, he forces he stretches us to us. to confront things in a different way. And I think, um, especially speaking, uh, I have I have lots of friends who they don't have that traditional family structure right. yet, or they may never have that family structure. And I do think it's, it's somewhere where maybe they... <laughs> They are a little more plugged in to, to Christ's perspective on these things than than we're disposed to be with with the church's traditional line on on family issues, which isn't to say that families are bad. And I do think that they are our first opportunity to practice Christ-like behaviors, right? Definitely. But I also think that Jesus is such a good reminder that you can you can have found family, you can have family structures that don't look exactly like all of the cartoons and pictures of families might look. And that's something that, especially as I recently got married, but I was a, a single member of the church for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's it's nice to remember that as far as we know, Christ operated a lot like a, a single person. And he it's not that he didn't have family, but he had a different perspective on what a family could be. And I think that, again, it's something that challenges us a little bit, but in in a good way. And it's a way that forces us to open up our our understanding of how how we live our own lives as well as how others live theirs and get close to Christ. Oh, I agree. And Annette, you and I, though, had very traditional families and big, big families. families. <laughs> yeah. So what is your thought on that? Well, I think, you know, it is maybe particularly for us to think because... Um, one of the wonderful things about focusing on your families is you have lots of responsibilities towards them. You want to do fun things with them. You want to celebrate them. It takes a lot of time. And we have, we run the risk of becoming a little bit tribal in that. You know, I, I remember talking when I was young, very young. We just moved to Denver and there was a young couple who had been living in Utah. I said, oh, that must have been so wonderful all. I had never lived near other members of the church really. And they'd always been very dispersed, um, maybe in California, but I didn't really live in California that much at that point after I joined the church. And um, she said, well, you know, in Utah, everybody has their family. And if you're not in their family, you're a little bit on the outside. I remember, I remember just feeling like, no, you know, it just hurt my heart to think that people weren't welcoming everyone into their families like family because we are family. Yeah. And I think that this, this response of the Savior, when they say, oh, your mom and your brother's outside, said, who are my mother, my sister, my brother, those who listen to what I'm saying, those who are following the teachings that I'm giving them? It, it is a little bit of a cautionary reminder to us that it is important that we treat all of those around us as really brothers and sisters, and we not draw those hard and fast lines. Well, and I love along with that is the inclusion of it, kind of going with what Gloriana was saying, that instead it it opens up our family. I mean, That's then anybody right. who is doing the will of of God becomes a part of my family. They exactly. are my brothers it's, and sisters. It's not advising you to treat your family worse. No. It's no. advising you to treat others better exactly. because you want to think of them like they're your family. And exactly. to welcome them in 
to this great family circle of brothers and sisters. Yeah, we don't just call call each other brother and sister. It should be how we feel about each other. Exactly. About and, everyone. Yeah. And that's I love that because then they become our brothers and sisters. They're just I we lived a lot of our our lives away from family. I mean, most of the time I was raising my children, we didn't live near family. And so basically what the people that became our family were oftentimes our ward family and our neighbors and the people around us because we didn't live by my brothers and sisters and my parents and or my um, husband's parents. And so I do think that my children did have that experience of feeling like their, you know, their family was much larger than just their relatives because of that. Yes, I think my kids definitely had that experience. <laughs> they were very, very inclusive. But I also, I also think, you know, that it is important for us as we sit in the world with non-judgment to understand Jesus...